Hello everyone, Joanne with StampingInTheValley.StampinUp.net and welcome to my craft room. Today we're going to make this adorable card right here with our Hey Chick bundle. Um, I was a little disappointed, I have to just say right off the bat, that I could not do something with this chicken coop, okay? And the only thing I was doing with it was just a solid color. And I was like, oh no, I wanted some dimension, but I didn't know how to do it. Well, thank you very much to Erica Serwin for um, showing how to give this type of dimension to this adorable chicken coop, and we're going to do that today on this video. Um, it, just a really, really adorable set. I just, the corn is too cute. We're going to do a little blending, ink blending here on our crumb cake. So I'll be back in just a moment, and we'll start to put this card together. Okay, so this card has a few stages to it, so we'll go through that in just a few minutes. Um, but first, if you order $50 in product from me, um, and please use this host code right here for February. Let me hold that up. Okay, that host code right there. Okay, for February. Um, and it should be posted at the beginning of this video. Hopefully I remembered to do that. Um, you will receive a full pack of opal rounds and two free card kits. These are the free card kits for this month. Everyone that orders from me gets the free card kits. But when you place your order to $50 in um, product before shipping, handling, and taxes, I add the Opal Rounds. Then if you go up to $100, um, you get all of this plus a video and PDF to make this adorable basket. Isn't this cute? You get a video and PDF to make this adorable basket when you um, get up to $100, and then from Stampin' Up, you will get to pick from the Celebration Catalog. Let me get that. Everything in here is free. Everything in here is free. If you're up to $100, a touch of ink is free with a $100 purchase, and the Berry Blessings is free with a $100 purchase. Everything else is free in here with a $50 purchase, and there's beautiful paper. I have used this paper like crazy. Okay, and stamp sets in there also. So, that's what's going on there. Okay, now what we want to do for the first... Isn't this cute? Oh my goodness. I'm so happy about this. I am just so happy finally about that chicken coop. I was a little disappointed because I, I myself didn't know what to do with it. But now this, we the colors are endless and fun, okay? Um, I happened to use uh, cherry cobbler here and it really stood out. But first what we're going to do is use some blending. Uh, we're going to do some blending right here with our crumb cake piece. This is five by three and three quarter. At the beginning of the video, there should be measurements. Also at the bottom of here, if you click the show more button, there's measurements and a product list down there for you. So uh, this has been embossed with our wood plank embossing folder <coughs> right here. I love this. I thought that that would be fun for the barn. And what, but look at the difference, okay? This is just the crumb cake by itself. And then this is where I've blended some early espresso on top of it. Okay? So isn't that interesting? But I love this color better. It also, um, the early espresso underneath it helps it to stand out that much better. When this was on top of it, it kind of just washed away. It's too light. But that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. So that's what we're going to do. Let me bring in some scrap paper right here. And I'm going to bring in my early espresso and a blending brush. I know that you've probably seen people use these. I love them. Uh, I don't do that much blending, uh, and but I love ink, I have to say. Now, this is nice and solid when you put it in here. Oh, you can just feel that it is a nice, solid, um, very dense bristles. Now, you don't want to take this and go right to the paper. Just tap off just a little bit. Just take that initial smudge off and then start on your surface here. So I'm just going to continue to do this till I like the color that I'm getting. 
Now I wash my brushes. Let me move this up because I have to get up here. I have to tell you, I just take this after I'm done today. <clears throat> I will just take this brush and take it under some uh, warm water and I just rinse the ink out. And that's how, that's what I do with my brushes. Be, I don't do a whole lot of ink blending, which I probably should because it is a lot of fun. And you get a great result. Like this is just adding some early espresso color to some crumb cake. And you can see it gives it that nice weathered barn look. Now, um, normally we'd use a sponge for flicking, but it's okay. I don't want a definitive line around the edge, but I want the edge to have that early espresso kind of little look to it. So I'm just taking the this brush and coming around through here. Just like that. But if you wanted a more definitive line, then you would go ahead and use a sponge or even a sponge dauber. Each way gives you just something different. Okay, now we have a little bit of a line around there. Now I just take my blending, whoop, my blending brush and try not to crinkle your paper. And look at how nice that brush just takes away that line right there. Isn't that nice? I didn't want the line, okay? I just want it to blend in there nicely. Oh, it's, it's absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. Let me see if I can't just bend that, we're good. That's gonna get glued down anyway. Okay, so let me close this up for just a second because we're gonna use it again. Let me move this out of the way. I, use, I just use old computer paper, guys, when I do things like that. Okay, so now we have a base of basic white at um, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. It will open like this. And then we're going to place our early espresso here and then this on top. Let's go ahead and add this to our early espresso first. Again, liquid glue because I have the embossing, although the Seal Plus is really, really good for that uh, with embossing. I'm just a liquid glue gal, right? Everybody has their preference of what they like to use in their craft room. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love it. And see how nice and weathered it looks? That's great, right? So now we're going to place this on here with our Tombow because this is going down flat. Other things were going to pop up. Okay, right here. Okay, now let's go ahead and, and complete the inside of our card while we're going here, okay? Very simply, I love the little egg with the feet. And we're gonna, it's gonna say, you're a good egg. We have embossing to do. We have cutting with the mini cutter to do. We have some coloring to do. So let's go ahead and finish the inside. Um, this piece is basic whisper white, four and three quarter by three and a half. And this is early espresso, five by three and three quarter. I'm gonna stamp three of these little guys right here. They're so cute. And okay, so like we're really healthy. We have brown eggs, right? There we go. Three of those guys. And now you're a good egg right here. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Do I have an envelope over here? Yes, I do. Okay, let me just move this aside and let's go ahead and stamp our envelope just with our egg. So cute. <laughs> with the crack in it, right? Sometimes you just get a cute set and you can't help but just come in the craft room on a Saturday morning and just start to play. I, I watched that video last night with Erica Serwin and I was in here about oh, 1.30 in the morning putting that um, 
<clears throat> chicken coop together because I loved it so much. Um, and I really appreciate her creativity. But I had to, what um, I had to, I could not like go to bed. I was like, oh no, I've got to go create that. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Okay, now this goes on the inside of the card. Very simple. That looks so cute, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. Very cute. You're a good egg. I love it. I love it. Okay, now let me break away and I'll be back in just a moment and we will start putting some pieces together. Okay, in this first segment, we are going to, um, I've named her Gladys. Okay, we're going to stamp and cut her gla color Gladys and um, uh, then we're going to emboss our sign. So for some reason or another, I have named these chickens. I wouldn't know what to do with a chicken, okay? Um, so I'm going to stamp her here. This is just a piece of scrap paper. I don't need my foam mat because I'm on red rubber, okay? Um, so for some reason, I've named them. Um, this is Gladys, this is Ethel, and this is Penelope. So there. I don't know why. But I think they're very cute and they needed a name. So that's that. <laughs> so yeah okay now I have cut out these um, absolutely adorable dies let's look at them in here because we're really going to be using them um, I have cut this sign out right here out of early espresso and it has that wood grain kind of look to it right there see that but it's dark, so we're going to emboss on there, but look at these dies. We have corn. We're going to make some of that. We're going to do the stalk. I'm going to show you how to put um, the adhesive back strips on here, so it's very, very easy to put the card together. I love those strips. I've been using those a lot. They are now an essential in my craft room. Okay, so here we go with this. Let's go ahead and do just a little embossing. I'm going to take my embossing buddy and right there... I'm going to put that down and I have a lot of powder on that so I just have like this one I got at the Dollar Tree okay but there's a big difference between I would I would not blend with this but it's good to wipe things off I also use it to wipe that gold um, leafing off with so that's pretty good okay so um, here's Versamark because we're gonna do some embossing and we're gonna emboss have a happy day now, Versamark is a very goopy, sticky ink, especially if you're new to crafting, which I know that many of you are. So you want to use your embossing buddy first, then the Versamark. This is clear. There we, oh, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Okay, let me hold that up. Now, I'm not in a hurry because this will stay, um, this will stay wet for a little bit. So let me bring that up. See how that is clear? We're gonna bring our powder in. This is a white embossing powder, especially for you new crafters. This is a great technique. It's easy and fun. And start with one color first, okay? Like, just start with doing white. Don't get crazy. I have a little bit of residual right there, and I have a little paintbrush up here. I just saw it, but now my eyes are, oh, here it is. And so I'm just going to, because once you heat set that, it's where it is, okay? So that's perfect now. Just like that. So cute, right? And um, if you're new, to my channel. I, I've had a lot of new subscribers and I appreciate you, um, but I don't know if you're an avid crafter or maybe new to crafting. So um, these little spoons are ice cream spoons. I got at a place called the Stock Pot. They do things around here in bulk, like for restaurants. So um, that's where I got these. And this little container I got at Walmart. It, it actually holds crayons. It's in the um, uh, where you would get tape and that kind of thing department 
And then this in here, just to keep my spoon out of that mess, that's the teeniest tiny command hook that you can find. Okay, and I love the way these close. See, because I can actually I'm almost do it one-handed. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our heat tool going here. Because now you want a heat set. This will then dry, I mean uh, melt actually, and dry and look like it's white paint. Like somebody painted the sign. I think that's so cool. So like I said, if you are new to crafting, look at how nice that just really turned like white paint. So if you are new to crafting, this is a wonderful way to start a new technique of embossing. A little heat, a little white embossing powder. Don't make it difficult. Do something easy. This was easy. Easy peasy, right? Okay, now we're going to color Miss Gladys right here. And she's going to get some light and dark daffodil delight and some light pumpkin pie. I'm going to use this bullet tip or the nib tip, people call it, and I'm going to do her nose and her little feet. Now the thing to remember with an alcohol marker is not to place a lot of pressure because alcohol spreads and so really with this I'm almost like dotting it and then allowing it to spread out and um, that's how it just stays within the lines of course we've stamped in tuxedo memento black ink and that's the ink that you need to use tuxedo black right here so that it's almost like um, it's almost like it encases the ink and it doesn't bleed out now I'm going to use a little dark Daffodil Delight because Miss Gladys needs highlights. And um, so I just, again, I have that bullet tip or the nib tip, and I'm just going to place some darker ink in her wild, crazy hair here. I love it. And then her. I don't know what you would call plume or whatever that this is, her feathers back here. Um, like I said, um, I'm from Jersey, so, and there's farms in New Jersey. I just was not a farm person, you know, so, but I think my chicken is coming out just fine. So, <laughs> now I have the brush tip right here on the light daffodil delight, and I'm going to go into every part of her hair, and I'm even coming over into the dark area that I just put down because the ink will reactivate itself. Stampin' Up! does all this for us, okay? You don't even have to worry about it. Watch what I'm doing. Nothing. I'm just coloring, okay? The, the highlighting is going on all because of the product. Um, so the I'm just placing this and I'm going over the dark areas also with the lighter color and then things just blend just reactivates the ink and it just blends in isn't look at her hair oh my goodness oh my goodness she is adorable she's just adorable sorry if there's a shadow today it's a very rainy poopy morning I mean like oh I want more dark down here um, and it's a great day to be in this craft room so I'm trying to do more videos too even with my lives I have so much that I want to share with you guys. Okay, so I went over all of those little dark spots that Stampin' Up! provides. Love them, right? So, because they know we're not all of us are fantastic artists. Now I've got the light Daffodil Delight and I'm coming around her face and I'm coming right over those dark areas. Again, it's going to just reactivate that ink and give us a little shading. That's all that we're looking for. And I'm, I just kind of go back over everything with the lighter shade. And it really just pulls that ink. It does it for us. You don't have to worry. I'm just outlining and coloring. It's doing everything for me. I'm just in here. And then if you think that you have, you know, like lines or, you know, that you want to blend it more, just take your marker and go back over it. It'll just blend it out just like that. Isn't she adorable? So cute. 
Okay, now what we need to do, I'm going to bring the mini in. I love my mini cutter. Do you have the mini stamp cut and emboss machine yet? <clears throat> it's just $60. It's a, it's a great machine. Oh, let me put this this way. Okay. All right, here we go. Let me find, I just have that die out. Where is she? Come on, Gladys. Let's get in here. I thought that I was really having trouble with it, um, adding like adhesive sheets to it and stuff. No, it was the way I had my plates. And I think because it's small, you have to just make sure that you're nicely lined up. I think I was off. I'm going to put some washi tape on that for sure. I don't want Gladys moving around, right? So, um, I even cut a piece of adhesive. Like, let me show it to you. I have it right up here. You know our foam adhesive strips? I, I mounted this on gold and cut this out, and it went right through here. So I was very, very pleased to see that it was my positioning of it. I placed this a little further down on the little machine, and then make sure that you're really lined up here. Make sure your sandwiches are really lined up. And then I start it, and then it just really catches. And then I start it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm through my plate. Here we go. Now here we go. Okay. And then it just goes, it catches and it goes right through. So I was really pleased that I kind of worked out the kinks with that. You know, and I guess, you know, turn your plates, do whatever that you need to do. But I um, really love the, I love the, it being so compact for me. Now look at our chicken here. Look at Miss Gladys. Ah, uh, she's adorable. She is, uh, look at that blending. I, that is so perfect. She's so wonderful. And now we did a little bit of embossing, okay? So here in this little segment, we've done some coloring and embossing. If you're new to crafting, it's very, very simple. It's not hard. It's really not hard. Um, so I'll be back in just a minute, and we'll now we're going to put some adhesive and start to make our um, chicken wire and our barn. Okay, now in this segment, we're going to go ahead and put the adhesive on the back of our pieces here. So for our chicken wire, I'm using our silver foil paper, and this piece is one and a half by three. This is basic white, and this is cherry cobbler, and they are both um, one and three quarter by two and a half. So one and three quarter this way by two and a half doesn't really matter. Okay, and then um, I've just got a piece, a scrap of early espresso, and this does not need adhesive, but this fits on here nicely, just like that. And we'll be cutting this out with the adhesive on the back and this one without. Okay, so let's put our adhesive back here. Now, you can go ahead and um, use a trimmer or whatever you'd like uh, to cut the, this out. I, honest to goodness, guys, I'm just not big on measuring. It's just not my deal. Um, so I just like take this and I'll put it here. And I cut it a smidge, a smidge, okay? Is this a smidge? Okay. <laughs> a smidge shorter than what I need. Just a smidge. Okay, so I just kind of come in here with my snips and just kind of get under there. And that'll cut it a smidge shorter. And are we good there? Yeah, I just kind of take a, I just eyeball it really. And just a little bit shorter here. just like that. And then I take the adhesive that I just cut, okay? And sometimes there's a line that you can pull it and sometimes you've got to pick it by the uh, corner. You know, it takes you a second to get it started. And then you just want to take your adhesive and place it on the back of your piece that you're going to use. And as you can see, this is why I cut it just that smidge shorter, okay? So let's do this one. Actually, let's go ahead and um, do our silver right here. So just a little shorter there. Also, well, here's another way to do it. I did this before. Let me get a pencil. 
okay and I'm just tracing it this is another easy peasy way to do it so there's your pencil mark now just cut inside your pencil mark just to make sure that it's that smidge shorter and you're in good shape right just inside that pencil mark I think that's a really good way to do it too you know or you could hold it up there and do you know do however um, a lot of people already stick this down they peel here's another way to do it okay so they open it up <clears throat> okay your sticky is here and they stick it down okay and then they cut let's see can I get it this way yeah let me get it that way this time just a little so there's three different ways to place this here we go here okay and then I'm just going to cut it right up to you know your paper there to tell you the truth I have I like the pencil the best just tracing it with a pencil but see you then you have pieces you save everything I'm all about saving with this stuff really okay so now let's go this is already on here that's wonderful we have to place this on our silver now I don't tape this down because then it mars my surface here this is just per poster board so that's why it kind of shifts around a little bit okay we're gonna do this oh fun okay now understanding that wonderful okay understanding that <clears throat> when we do this there's going to be a lot to punch out okay let's go ahead and move the mini in I didn't know if I would get to this point or have to stop so let's go ahead and cut our chicken coop out of the um, early espresso piece here we go and honest that's just a piece of scrap I just wanted a craft this morning so I thought what better way after I made that card and did that barn last look that cute it's cute anyway right but we're gonna make it even stinking cuter okay let's go ahead and get our <clears throat> silver through here okay right there and here watch perfect oh no why is it oh no that's not perfect you know I'm just wondering I just have to wonder maybe I didn't have it lined up no look it's scooting to the left okay okay so it is it is definitely scooting itself to the left this is something to call Stampin' Up! about um, on Monday so we'll stop okay I just moved the big uh, the larger machine in the stamp cut and emboss machine I have tried everything okay and I've, I've, I've even said I think it's me then it cut but I right there I had it back I was doing it perfect and I don't know what's going on but it's kicking it to the left so we will definitely give them a buzz on Monday and see what they say but we've got this so let's go ahead and cut our little piece of chicken wire here and because it's backed <clears throat> with um, adhesive I run it through a couple of times okay now I'm not going to poke all of this out on camera okay <laughs> so but what I want to do ooh, this is why I love the mini well okay where'd my little pieces go oh my <laughs> are they stuck to the bottom of oh there they are okay I put them up here okay because I had to move in the larger machine I put them way up here so we have cherry cobbler that we put the adhesive on and then the basic white 
So let's cut out our white piece first. And we're, this fits perfectly in here. This is perfect. And you don't waste that much adhesive. You know I'm all about don't waste it. <clears throat> and again, but this is like one solid piece. But I am going to run it back and forth. Okay. So here's the white one. So this is fun, right? Cute, right? All right, put that in our pile. And now, let's go ahead and cut the cherry cobbler. Right there. Just like that, and then back through again. So I'm sitting here thinking, you know, um, I'm lucky I saved the box for that thing. Usually I just throw them right away, but I did save that box. I'm glad for that. Okay, so now we have our cherry cobbler piece. Look at the detail in that. Isn't that fun? Okay, let's move this aside now. We'll just keep rolling here, right? Let's just keep going. This is fun. <clears throat> so here we have Gladys and our sign. And um, I'm not. Uh, when I break away, I'll take this apart. See, it's just going to come like that, but all of these little pieces, they'll come out. And um, sometimes you do have to use your little tool. But um, here, let's go ahead and play with our um, chicken coop here, okay? So we have these three chicken coops. And we want to think about layering. We want to layer the cherry cobbler on top of the early espresso because we want to have our legs and the ramp still to be the dark wood, okay? So what we're going to do is cut the legs off right here. It, this is so simple. When she did this, I was like, um, okay. Sometimes thinking outside the box is not as far as what you think, you know? It, it's kind of like, oh, okay, now we have adhesive here on this red part on the cherry cobbler so we're going to peel this off isn't that wonderful and we're going to place this right on top here allowing our legs and our ramp to stick out isn't that cute now okay it's it's cute as could be just like that just like that it's cute as could be right um, let me get my little pieces out of the way here. We don't have that big of a working space, so we have to make sure we keep it a little, little kind of cleaned up while we're going. Okay, now, to get the white around, this does take a little bit of cutting, but it's not bad. And if I'm telling you it's not bad, I mean it. It's seriously not bad. It's just cutting straight. So you want to, like, cut out the um, you want to cut out the outline of the outline right here of the barn or uh, chicken coop so let's leave that right there as we cut okay let's keep looking at that so I've already detached this there's um, like a little strip right here that is let me bring that up right here see that you want to keep this outline going, okay? So you want to bring this out here on the outside of that line and cut the outside of this off. But you want to keep this, okay? So don't cut up into there. All right, now you want to come to the other side of that um, board there that is like the, um, I don't know, what would it be? The molding of the house. <clears throat> up to the roof and whatever line that you decide to cut on you can make your roof thinner or thicker just stay on that line because there's just a couple of lines up here okay I took the I took the thicker part of the roof I thought it was cute okay now I'm gonna cut this out see what I'm doing how I'm keeping the trim I guess that's what it's called right the trim I'm keeping the trim Okay, now, up through here, and you know it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a chicken coop, okay? <laughs> that is what is so wonderful. 
So right here, this is already detached to a point. And just go ahead and detach it, but leave this. Okay, now, the most wonderful part of this is that you have your adhesive on it, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and detach this. You have your adhesive. Okay, we're going to put this down first over here on top of this roof and things should at that point just fall into place. So let's not press yet. I'm going to connect this side. Oh, it's perfect. It is absolutely wonderfully perfect. Oh, it's just wonderful. Oh, I'm just oh, so cute. Oh. Now you could leave that, okay? You could totally leave that, but she was not done. So I'm going to cut the bottom off here. Let's see, let me, I'm going to cut this entire bottom off, okay? Almost to where it looks like a little cake plate. Okay, see how I cut that? That all the way off right there? Okay, now, again, the trim around the door is what you want to keep. So outside, the trim around the door is what you want to keep. And this is not difficult fussy cutting at all. It's just straight lines. Ju it's just little, okay? And then on the inside, I try to get m the point of my snips right where I need it and give it one chop. Just one. So I don't get too chop, you know, uh, choppy, a choppy cut. So right here, I try to get my point right where I need it. Snip. And then here, And I'm sorry if my fingers are giving a big shadow, but I have to just hold on to that, right? Let's, maybe that's better, right? Right up there. There, okay. Woo, there's our door. Cute, right? Now, if you want to angle anything up or thin anything out, now's the time to do it. I am going to thin this out on this side just a hair they don't have to match it is a chicken coop okay so now luckily we have tape or adhesive I should say not tape we have adhesive back here ta-da yay and now we're going to frame our door out just perfectly around here and here is our barn Gladys has a house isn't that wonderful okay and now I'm gonna break away I'm gonna punch all this out we'll come back and we'll do some more okay we are ready to assemble our card um, I did our little corn stalks here also with the adhesive on the back okay so I I've already done that I uh, did the little corn in here in your, oh these are so cute, in your dies. This is corn and these are the husks that go around it. Okay, so here's the corn, here's the husks, okay. And so I cut the corn out of um, crushed curry and the husk out of pear pizzazz because I did the stalk in garden green, okay. So I wanted to show you that. All right, now, um, I'm just going to use a teeny tiny glue dot. I save these from my paper pumpkin. You can also use just a little bit of Tombow. Put it right at the bottom of the stalk of corn. And to me, the stalk of corn, the skinnier part is the top. Um, these are so little and they're so much fun. Okay, and now I'm going to put the husk over top of this. You can use a regular size glue dot too. I believe would be just fine there. I just like to use these minis sometimes that we get with paper pumpkin. Um, oh, speaking of paper pumpkin, oh, let me tell you guys. Now back here, I'm going to put a mini dimensional. Um, sign up for paper pumpkin before March 10th right because let me see if i have the flyer we're going to get stencils a free gift 
We get a free gift here. Okay. Um, sign up between February 11th and March 10th. I wasn't even thinking about this until I pulled out those glue dots. Look here, we're getting stencils. Clouds, stars, a big sunburst that looks like mountains, right? We are getting this. You are going to want to sign up for at least one month of Paper Pumpkin. Sign up before March 10th. And remember, if you're on my Paper Pumpkin list, you're also going to get the two free card kits um, for the month. So that's a lot of fun. Every month I do free card kits, and um, you will receive those also from me uh, by joining my Paper pum Pumpkin team, which is a whole lot of fun. But really, if you love stencils and you want to play with something, we're getting four of them, guys. Four stencils. Isn't that great? I'm excited. I'm very, very, very excited about this. Very excited about this set. I'm really excited about those stencils. So, <clears throat> that's coming. Okay, so that's where the glue dots got me, right? How funny. Um, and, let's see. I have a corn stuck to the back of my flyer. I looked down and there were three. I went, oh no. <laughs> okay. So here we have all of this ready to go, and we're going to start to assemble our scene. I love this. I love to make a scene. Um, I think it's just so much fun. Let's bring in our base that we have already done some um, prep work to, right? We've already done that. Uh, so nice with the blending brush, right? And we already did the inside. You're a good egg. I love that. Isn't that fun? Okay. Now, we're going to take our um, chicken coop here, and I just want to place some dimensionals here. Let's just do three. Put one here, one up here, and there. I think that'll be fantastic for this. I want dimension on this card. And I'm going to place this up here. So cute. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Next, I'm going to place, um, I want to place my stalks, my um, corn stalks. So just, sometimes we need a little tool. Sometimes it'll just come right off there. I have it started. It's just, I clip my nails off, and I seriously, I have nothing to pull this with. <laughs> Let's take a bigger piece right here. Let's see. Yes, if I wasn't on camera, there we go. It'd come right off, right? Okay. There. <laughs> I'm trying to show you all how easy it is, right? <laughs> um, okay, so this one I'm going to put lower and more toward the chicken coop. And isn't that nice? We didn't have to turn any Tombow up or anything that sticks. So let's go ahead and get this one. Hopefully it will be um, easier as I start it with the tool because of the point. I think my finger bent it back a little bit. And then there's this. Okay, good. <laughs> right there. Ah, love it. Makes a sticker out of anything skinny. And we don't have to worry about glue. I just love that. When, we, when I can use this, I really do use it. And I like it because this is embossed. So I know that's really going to stick well. Okay, now we're going to, I punched all of this out. It really came out quite easily. And actually, um, if you were to peel the back off of it first, um, it takes a lot of it out with it. But I punched it out so that I could show you the peeling. Look at that. That's a sticker. I love it. Just so much fun. Okay, now, I don't want this directly under my chicken coop. I'm just going to offset it a little bit and let it come onto my stalk just a little bit. And that's just going down just perfectly. Oh, I love it. Now let's go ahead and put our sign. And I'm going to put a dimensional. And then I'm going to put a very small little straight piece of dimensional right down here to help me with the bottom of my sign. 
Use every bit of your dimensionals, especially if you are new to crafting. Always use every bit. I'll show you. I cut the, the straight pieces out from here, and that's where I get that from. Let's see right here. That's where I get those little teeny tinies from. And sometimes we just need them in what we're doing, you know. <clears throat> sometimes you just can't use a mini dimensional. Now here is a mini dimensional. This is a mini dimensional right here. It fits quite well on our corn. And I'm just going to place these just fun, okay? Just have fun placing them. They're just a cute little, really and truly the cutest little embellishment for a farm scene that I could ever even think of. Isn't that adorable? Okay, now, Gladys is going to be very happy to be here on her farm. I love this. Okay. Now, down here I noticed um, when I put this one together, her little feet need a little something. So again, I'm just going to, um, I actually cut one of those in half. It's so small, just so small. And I'm just going to put it right here. And this is what this is just fantastic for. You can make the teeny tiniest dimensionals and I put them on her little feet. And I'll just take the backs off. If I can grab them. Here it is. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now she's going to come in here on a little angle because she has attitude and I just really like her. There is our card for today, Saturday morning, rainy, cold Saturday morning, yucky, yucky day out, but a fantastic day to be here with you guys in this craft room making wonderful projects like this. I hope that you will try what I have done with our little chicken coop there. Here's the die. Um, thank you, Erica Sirwin. Again, I can't thank you enough for all of your ideas. You, she is a wonderful um, person and wonderful crafter. Um, so I really appreciated that. It helped me to enjoy this set like I really wanted to. I really wanted more definition out of this chicken coop, and we've got it. So here we are. Oh, I just, I am so happy with this card. So cute. I hope you'll try it. Thanks again for watching. Please go to your craft room and do some happy crafting today.